Hello and welcome to another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. And uh, in this episode, we're going to talk about the neat Magistra loudspeaker. Which is a pretty funky loudspeaker, isn't it, overall? It's, yeah, it is actually. It's a very interesting and unusual one, actually. And I think it's one that's quite close to your heart, Mike, because you're... Uh, it is. You're a bit of an isobaric fan, are you not? It's something which, um, it's funny you should say that, it's something which didn't seem to take off in the, in the sort of late 70s. Lynn produced the Sara, uh, which were isobaric loudspeaker, and the isobarics, which were, guess what, an isobaric loudspeaker. Isobaric with a K. With a K, yes. But, um, but not very many other speaker manufacturers have followed that trend, have they? Which surprised me, because I, I think it's a great idea. Well, the whole idea was that you get substantially more bass power out of a you know a cabinet of the same size that you you, you would otherwise need to make bigger in order to get uh, that amount of bass power out absolutely by putting a second bass driver yeah. behind the first one yep yeah. and uh, moving loads and loads of air without uh, having to have a huge cabinet and of course the bigger the cabinet the more problems that can induce as well with speaker designers absolutely so um, if you have got a large cabinet with a conventional design, let's say a two or a three way, um, then you've got all the issues of controlling the resonance in the cabinet um, and therefore it theoretically, uh, if you have a smaller cabinet that's isobaric loaded, uh, you have less of an issue uh, with that but you have a similar, in theory, bass response. So. And, and NEAT have done this for, you know, for, for, the, for the 21st century, um, they've produced a fabulous loudspeaker but it's got one other ace up its sleeve, hasn't it? Which is it's got this ribbon tweeter as well. Um, yeah. and, and a very lovely sounding ribbon tweeter at that. It is, it's a pure ribbon. Um, and um, it's, um, uh, I think, uh, apart from the other speakers in that, that particular neat range, I think the Magistra is one of uh, the only uh, ribbon tweeter isobaric uh, hybrids, combinations. Yes. Um, uh, ever, I can't think of any other. And, and, and just to sort of put even more icing on the cake here, they've they've ported it to make it an even more unusual uh, yes. loudspeaker. So uh, your uh, Mike has actually got uh, a pair of Lynn isobarics uh -huh. um, with a K, mm -hmm. um, and uh, a pair of Lynn Saras as well, uh, which are kind of similar size, roughly, to the Magistra. Um, the Magistra is. Uh, 220 by 380 by 290 millimeters um, so like that basically yeah um, and um, it's uh, it's roughly the same size as the Saras <laughs> I'd say the Saras are slightly bigger but um, the Saras are of course a sealed box aren't they yes um, whereas the Magistra uh, interestingly does have a port but it's done slightly differently from a conventional reflex port um, it's just I think a very small aperture uh, inside the cabinet that, that uh, uh, lets the, the air travel through, so um, it's not quite the same. just want to talk about the size of these speakers, because I wouldn't say they were bookshelf speakers by any stretch of the imagination, but they're actually, I think, a great form factor size. Yeah. You know, they're not hugely intrusive. Um, I've got to also mention the build quality is fabulous. I mean, the pair which, which we were auditioning were, were in white, um, gorgeous design, a little bit of a quirky design. Would you would you agree with that? Yeah, I think um, um, firstly, um, to me, it's important that the cabinets were made in the UK. I think in in England, um, and that's great. Um, also, the the design is it, it's in itself quite conventional. It's just a square, uh, medium, small to medium size stand mount design. Um, but it's got a very interesting front baffle treatment, yes, hasn't it? Has, it? Yeah. Um, and uh, it's very yeah. clever. It, it, it sort of... Um, it's like it's chamfered off, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And um, it, it sort of gives a sort of twist to the look of the speaker. It does. I think, um, I think they're very attractive loudspeakers. Yeah. Um, so in terms of sound quality, I think when you listen to them initially, there's a couple of things for me which really stand out. First of all is because of this isobaric principle the amount of sort of bottom end grunt which they can deliver. And you almost sort of have to blink and say, you know, is it really coming from those two relatively tiny boxes? Yeah. Um, the treble, and I've heard some pretty horrific ribbons in my time, 
is gorgeous. Yeah. Um, but I think more importantly, I think the thing which, which dare I say we agreed on for a change, is the crossover is beautiful, isn't it? It's, it's, it's got a great distinction between bass and treble, and it, it rolls into one another absolutely seamlessly. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it really is a, a very easy to listen to loudspeaker. Well, that's always traditionally the problem of having a ribbon tweeter with a moving coil mid bass driver mm. that you end up with a kind of buy one get one free speaker yes. you, you know that uh, tr- tr- the a ribbon tweeter is doing its own thing sounding very very fast and, and light um, and then the sort of bass driver is chugging away you know kind of half a beat behind the music down yes. below yes um, so you're kind of getting a kind of boom boom tiz boom uh, not quite in time and um, I think that um, uh, the designer of the Magistra, which is Bob Sergener, the, the um, sort of uh, head of NEAT and the founder of NEAT, um, has done a fantastic job. Um, uh, it, it integrates very, very well. The ribbon tweeter matches very, very nicely with the, uh, the, the, the two mid-bass drive units. Absolutely. Um, now, yeah. I, but one of, the, one of the problems which the, the SAR has had particularly, and, and also the Lynn Isobarics from the sort of late 70s, early 80s period, um, were h- how difficult they were to drive. Yeah. And I think that, you know, you, you, you do have these large units within the NEATs. They do need to get going to move some air. Um, and and we, we had to use some pretty decent amplification uh, with them, didn't we? Yeah, absolutely. We, we've tr- tried them with uh, various uh, amplifiers. Um, so, uh, neat quota sensitivity figure of 86 dB at okay. one watt, one meter, um, which um, is pretty low, I'd say, for a, a speaker of its size in 2022. Um, yes. If it was um, 1982, <laughs> uh, you know, when you had Celestian SL6s and mm. things like that, uh, with 83 dB uh, for one watt sensitivity, that sort of ballpark, uh, you, you'd probably not think it's so bad. but 86 is not great for modern um, for the modern world um, but that's offset by the fact that, that power is much cheaper these days so Very you, can, true. you know you can pretty much all amplifiers you buy these days have got at least 60 70 watts you know solid state ones yes. um, and um, we tried it with the exposure 3510 which is 110 watts per channel. A cracking little amplifier, yeah, dare yeah. we say, as well. Yeah. But it handled them pretty effortlessly, actually, didn't it? It seemed to have an yeah. awful lot of transient power delivery. Um, you didn't feel like it was struggling in the least, even when no. you sort of turn it up quite, quite yeah. highly. One of the things I liked about that combination is there's still um, a lot of bottom end, even at low volume. And that's also a trait I know with my Saras. Yeah. You know, you don't have to, you know, wind the needle up to 11 before you start getting some bass out of them. Yeah. And again, something I really liked about yeah. the needs. Well, I think um, in terms of extension, um, they're not um, wonderfully deeply extended. You get from a big f- uh, floor stander, sure. um, you know, you get a lot more, or indeed from a Lin Isobaric or uh, the Yamaha NS1000s that I usually use. Yes. Um, you'd get, you know, a proper... Um, th- stuff going on at 30, 35 uh, hertz. Um, so neat quota sensitive. Uh, sorry, a frequency response of twenty five hertz to forty kilohertz. But they don't give cutoff points. So it could be sure. minus fifteen dB at twenty five hertz. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, you know that doesn't really mean that much. I think it's got plenty of energy. Um, you know, well below a hundred hertz, um, and it can get the sort of mid and upper bass lines of a bass guitar very nicely. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's quite uh, the best thing for church organs and, and the like, but uh, it has a crack, doesn't it? It has really it does. It seems to work you know, very competently yeah. with lots of different types of music. Um, sounds great with you know, good old rock and roll, doesn't it, really? Um, yeah. Because of the, the, the nature of the recordings and the sort of punchiness of the needs. Yeah, you, I mean, um, you've got exactly that. You've got the kind of punch. I mean, I think the, the thing about the... the what re, what does it for me with the neat uh, with the bass is that it's 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 solid it's it's not breathless yeah. so you can go to high levels and it will give a proportionately larger amount of bass than at a lower level yeah. uh, instead of kind of giving up and saying good night Vienna I'm you know I'm, I sold this for a game of cricket or whatever <laughs> it, it keeps on going so at high levels um, it keeps on driving um, and I think that is the benefit of the iceberg even if you don't get the great 
really low base extension, which is practically impossible from anything with a cabinet that size. Yes. Uh, it still punches hard, yeah. you know, in the kind of mid and upper base, um, I think. Um, and you've still got that sort of illusion of, of more sound coming from such a small yeah, speaker. E exactly. And, and, you know, also, I think from a, a price point, I think Neat have got it absolutely spot on. They're just a smidgen of under three and a half thousand Great British Pounds. Um, three four we, nine five three, four, nine, five as we speak. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously without stands in that. Um, it's yeah. just for the loudspeaker. Yeah. Um, but I think you get a, a really rounded product for that. And also yeah. one of the things which we were chatting about was you know what's the what's the competition? You know what's it, what are they up against? And um, you know there are quite a, a few speakers at that price point. No no ribbon isobarics. No. I hasten to add. No. Um, if you if you would have to if you were to go to your local hi-fi dealer and do a comparison, what would you want to put them up against? So, it, it's a real, it's a real tr and it's a tricky one because um, you know what loudspeakers are, are kind of like food. You know we've got our our own tastes. Um, so um, the, 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 it is unusually expensive, I think, for a for a stand mounter. So most products at this. Uh, kind of part of the market are floor standers um, and um, you know that there's a massive choice from you know sort of monitor audio to spender and, and all, all the rest of it um, it, it's it's a tricky one but I, I think the, the thing is that they by by the design by their own design they are not they don't fit into the same kind of market segment as, as anything else around exactly um, so that they've kind of almost made their own niche market segment um, for people who want a big bass in a small space with a really nice uh, in-depth, um, high, high resolution, well focused uh, treble and mid-band and, and a kind of, you know, uh, suitably punchy, uh, thumpy bass. Sure. Um, I, I would shortlist them, personally. Yeah. I love yeah. the isobaric principle. Yeah. I think it works really well. I, I love the look of them. I think they're very, very well finished. And I don't think it's too bad a price point, to be honest. No, for the build quality and the amount of technology in them. Yeah, it, it's 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 a very good speaker. It's a very mm -hmm. interesting speaker. Um, it's a long way from you know sort of BMW type products, which try and reach a wide demographic of the market. Sure. Um, it's a specialist product, but it works incredibly well, and um, it's very musically enjoyable. Um, it's relatively uncolored. Um, you know the um, I think <laughs> in absolute terms the uh, there's a little bit of kind of congestion in the bass and you know um, it's not quite as crisp as the, the the beautiful ribbon tweeter but you know that's kind of judging it against 12,000 sure speakers. no that's fair um, enough that's it, a fair comment yeah I mean it gives a, a really I, I think you could come away from listening to something at 12 to 10,000 pounds and, and come to that and not feel that like you've been you know, demoted in sure, life uh, sure. at all. No, fair enough. Really impressive in that way. And look, can I ask you then on the uh, Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riffometer, uh, out of 10, what score would you give the Neats? Um, so, again, you've got me agonising over this. I think, <laughs> I, I think I would give them nine, providing you know what you're in for, that you're not going to get sort of subterranean low base, um, which you really need a floor stander from. Um, uh, but yeah, they're kind of niche, but wonderful, I think. And, and I'm, I'm going to uh, annoyingly agree with you uh, and give them a nine as well. Um, and I think, yeah. I think you know, they, they tick a lot of boxes for me as much as anything. I love that, that sort of innovation which they have, just sort of uh, you know, regenerating the lovely isobaric principle as well. So yeah, they're uh, a fascinating uh, contrast to the Linsaras. They were never really a price rival, but they're sort of similar size, and it's <clears throat> very interesting. It's kind of like a twenty twenty uh, first century Sara, isn't it? What's not to like? Absolutely. And there we are. So I think we've decided that the neats are pretty neat. So thank you for watching our episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Thank you.